What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective Seed Tutorials, Lesson 16, Creating the Class Interface. Now the interface gives the users of the class the information they need to work with the class. And down below there is the basic setup of the interface. You have at interface, then the class name, uh, colon, the super class, and we'll be getting into the super class a little bit later. And then in braces there, the instance variables, and then down below the instance variables, the methods declarations, and we went over IVARs and the methods in the last uh, last lesson or the lesson before that. And then down at the uh, bottom there of the interface, we have add end. So first off, our compiler directives. So when you see at interface and add end, it may look a little odd to you because you, uh, you've never really seen anything like it or we haven't so far. And all they are just compiler directives and they just tell the compiler where the beginning and end of the declaration is at. So uh, at interface says this is the beginning of the class declaration and at end says this is the end of the class declaration. So that's all it is, just telling the compiler where the beginning and end of something is. So compiler directives. Now, uh, the name and super class of the class. Um, the class name is obviously the name of the class. That's kind of a duh. But the super class, well, classes can be based on another class. And the class inherits the methods and IVARs of the super class. So it's kind of like um, how you inherit different character uh, traits and different genes and everything from your parents. You know, you you inherit uh, their looks and everything like that from your parent. Now you're not the same person as your parent, but you do inherit things from them. So that's kind of a generic um, example of the whole superclass class. Um, we'll get into more of this a little bit later, but it's just kind of the whole thing that it inherits different functionality. So you don't have to declare everything in your class. You can uh, grab stuff from other classes as well. So it's a nice feature in object-oriented programming. Now the instance variables and the methods. Now remember that the instance variables are kind of like the members of the class and the methods are kind of like the function prototypes. and naming conventions. Just want to go over this briefly. Class names usually, well, like always, begin with an uppercase letter. They don't have to, but that's just uh, how people name them in, obje in Objective-C. So uh, as a rule of thumb, go along with the naming conventions because when other people are reading your code or when you're reading theirs, it just it makes it a whole lot easier. So there you see budget it's a class name so capital B then IVARs and methods begin with a lowercase letter and then every word after that is an uppercase letter so spend all spend lowercase dollars uppercase so and uh, objective C is case sensitive so budget and budget are different when they have lowercase or uppercase B's so remember that as well now NS object NS object has all the methods, instance variables, and functionality of an Objective C object. And this is the super class of the budget class that we will be creating because it has all the um, functionality that we need to of an object and to create an object. So uh, you'll always be using NS, you'll be working with NS object a lot in uh, object oriented programming. Now instance variables or otherwise known as IVARs. Now when you create an object you are creating an instance of the class that the object is from. So if we have this food class and we create an object which is an apple. So we create this apple object. The apple is an instance of the food class. And every time you create a class object you also create space for its variables. And 
Uh, Ivars of a class, so Ivars of this food class correspond to like members of a struct that we uh, worked with back a few lessons. And the Ivars declared in a class, so the Ivars of this food class are assigned to every new object of that class. So whenever a new, let's say, fruit is created, it's assigned the Ivars of the food class. Okay, on to methods, and methods are the doing of the class. And up there above, I have a example method, and I'll be going through the whole method step by step. So first off is a, that dash there. And the dash tells the compiler that this is an instance method. You can also put a plus there, which says this is a class method, but we'll be in, into class methods later. Now the next part is the return type of the method and it's always enclosed in parentheses and the return type can be standards like an int or float or references to other objects and references to other objects are much like pointers but right now we're just going to be using void because we're not returning anything and uh, the next part spend dollars is the name of the method and the colon is used to separate the arguments from the rest of the method. And the colon is actually part of the method name. So it's spend dollars colon, not just spend dollars when you say the method name. And then the next part there is the argument of the method. So it's double dollars, the type, and then the name of the argument. And uh, both the argument and return type are in parentheses. And you could also return a value, even though this one doesn't, uh, very much like a function. So you just put return some value, uh, return, and then whatever the value is that you want to return. Now, methods with two arguments. Uh, it's actually very different than a function because a function, you had arguments. Well, you had the function name and then you had the arguments. In a method, you have the method name, but it's almost like you have more than one method name. And you're probably saying, what in the world are you talking about? Well, methods have a colon for every argument they have. And you're probably still saying, what in the world is he talking about? But just wait till the end of the slide, it will make sense. Now, each argument after the first has a name as well. So, um, this method is void it's the return type but then it's create budget and then it has an argument double budget and then also part of the method name is with exchange rate colon and that's also the name or like the title of this next argument float and exchange rate so the actual name of this method is create bu budget with exchange rate and why it's this way is because it makes it more like a sense because you know exactly what's going on. It's creating a budget with an exchange rate. And then you have, after create budget, you have the argument of budget. And then after with exchange rate, you have the argument and exchange rate. So it makes it more like a sense. And so you can just read it right out. You know exactly what the method's talking about. Very easy to understand. But uh, for every colon in the method name, there is that many arguments. So the um, it would be create budget colon colon. So then you know it's two arguments. Now the ending compiler directive is at n, and it lets the compiler know you have declared all of the interface. Now, one last thing in this lesson before we go into Xcode. Scoping IVARs. Now, objects have a scoping feature built in to hide an object's data. And classes have the same feature, but for adjustability, actually have three scoping levels. The first one is private, and only the class that declares the IVARs has access to them. And then the next one is protected. The class that declares and the classes that inherit the IVARs have access to them. And this is the default setting. And then there's public, which the IVARs can be accessed everywhere in your program. And this is definitely not recommended. But and this is all for the keynote. Now we're going to jump into Xcode and actually uh, 
start coding in object-oriented programming.